Test your knowledge, error detection. Now, the following five questions are aimed at helping you understand the different types of error detection methods used as a part of the communication systems unit of the IPT course. So let's go over these five questions. Question one, when would the type of parity being checked be established during data transmission? Question two, the following five data packets have been received using the parity bit error detection method. 10010110, then 10000001, then 11001100, and finally 10010001. Which of these packets is likely in error and why is this the case? Question 3 Explain how the checksum method of error detection works. Question four, in what scenarios may the cyclic redundancy check error detection be used? And question five, which method of error detection has the highest success at detecting errors? Now, I encourage you to pause the video here and in about five seconds, we'll start going through the answers. Okay, let's start going through the answers to these questions. So question one, when would the type of parity be checked, okay, when uh, establishing your data transmission? Well, basically, the sender and receiver decide whether an odd and even parity will be required during handshaking, okay? And handshaking, remember, is done at the beginning of data transmission, and it sets a variety of parameters. And um, I'm obviously going a bit further with this answer, but I do want to use this opportunity to go over handshaking again basically includes setting things like what communication channels will be used, what will be the transfer rate, what will be the interrupt procedure, and the use of any other protocols for data transmission is all established during handshaking. But it's at this point too that with the parity check, okay, the use of a parity bit in your error detection, it's established whether it's going to be odd or even at the handshaking stage. Question two, now which of these five um, packets of data has an error. Now, basically, we need to know that we're looking for either an odd or even parity, and it hasn't told us which one we're looking for. But if I start counting ones, one of these is going to stick out, basically, and the one that sticks out is the final packet, which is 10010001, and it's likely an error because it's the only packet that has an odd parity. It's the only one that has three ones. Okay? All the others have an even amount of ones and that's what basically determines an odd or even parity. How many ones are there? If it's an even amount of ones, it's an even parity. If it's an odd amount of ones, it's an odd parity. All the other four packets have an even uh, parity. Okay, Is it likely that they could have had an equal number of bit swaps and there might be errors amongst the other ones too? Yes, that is possible and that is a flaw of the parity bit uh, error detection method but the only one that has a different parity to all the others is the final packet of data. Question three, explain how the checksum method of error detection works. Basically, what it does is turns all the values, okay, into their decimal equivalents, okay, of all the packets of data and then adds them all together, sums up all the bytes of data within that packet. Each byte has its value added together and then it is divided by a number based on the big length of the binary digit. After this division, it is the remainder that is the checksum, okay? So then this gets sent, okay, with the actual data, okay? And then the same process is conducted at the recipient's end. If the checksum is the same value after they do the same process, then it's safe to say that it is error-free, the actual um, transmission of the data. Question four, in what scenarios may a cyclic redundancy check uh, of error detection be used? The CRC is commonly used in Ethernet and ATM transmissions, and basically um, these are very strict transmissions, especially ATM when we're dealing with high financial data. So we don't have much um, openness to error. Okay, if there's error, it can lead to people losing money, and people get very upset about losing money. So that's why we use CRC, and this concept leads us into the last question, which method has the highest rate um, of success? And it is actually CRC which has a 99.99 detection of all possible errors. Okay, so we're making sure that financial data and things are as accurate as possible with the lowest amount of error possible, okay, with its method of error detection. And remember, the CRC error detection method works by basically crunching the whole digit together into one large binary bit 
and then dividing it by a polynomial generator and it's quite a complex type of division okay its remainder is then sent as the actual CRC and then the same process on the other end too in order to check its success rate similar to checksum just at the initial stage of finding your initial value is a lot more complex now I hope this helps you understand these different types of error detection methods a bit better of parity bit checksum and CRC hope you got five out of five